Headline, Google loses antitrust case brought by Epic Games. And if you guys don't know who Epic Games are, they're the ones who make the popular game Fortnite. And uh, they brought this against Google about three years ago. And um, this is actually really quite interesting. It was a jury trial. And you can see here, Epic win, uh, Epic win. jury decides that Google has illegal monopoly in App Store fight. So I wanna go through the details of this stuff. Um, if you're in the tech industry, you wanna pay attention to this. If you like games, you wanna pay attention to this. And if you own a phone, you wanna pay attention to this stuff. Um, essentially, uh, these are the kind of fights that are gonna be happening in the future. And if you're young kids out there, I would say if you want to go into law, go into this kind of law because I don't think this will be the end of these kind of cases. So let's read through some of the details together here. It says, uh, three years after Fortnite maker Epic Games sued Apple and Google for allegedly running illegal app store monopolies. So um, this particular case is the Google one. The Apple one is separate, but Epic did beat uh, Google here according to the jury because the jury did decide. Um, I mentioned that is because there have been other cases brought against Google um, but they've been settled uh, without a jury. Uh, so this was interesting that they went with jury. So the jury in Epic versus Google has delivered its verdict and it found that Google turned its Google Play App Store and Google Play billing service into an illegal monopoly. Now there's different facets of sort of like what was the jury deciding. Uh, we'll go over the details here. So it says here, um, the jury unanimously answered yes to every question put before them. Uh, here's, so here's the first one here. Google has a monopoly power in the app store distribution markets and in app billing services markets. Here's another. Google did anti-competitive things in those markets. And yet another thing, uh, uh, Epic was injured by that behavior. Uh, they decided Google has an illegal tie between its Google Play Store and its Google Play billing payment services too, and that its distribution agreement, they call it Project Hug, uh, deals with game developers and deals with OEMs were all anti-competitive. So you have multiple things going on here. And uh, I'll, I'll just give you a basic gist of it is that uh, say I put a, a, a app, you know, on the app store and I want to charge money on, you know, said app. Um, can I do it in a separate system or uh, do I have to do it through Google system? And then if I do it through Google system, uh, essentially they get a cut the same way Apple gets a cut and it's like a 30% cut. So we're not talking about small money here. We're talking about pretty big money. And there's all kinds of apps on the app store. I'm sure you guys know, like be it uh, something like a Spotify, be it your dating apps, uh, be it, for example, lately I've been looking at uh, workout apps, true story. <laughs> and some of these workout apps are really expensive. Like anywhere from say, I'm, I'm just telling you, they're like $20 a year to $30 a year, could be as high as $50 a year. It just depends. And I'm sure dating services are big money as well. Um, you guys can tell me like the, the stuff of that. Um, and I'm actually not sure. I'm just uh, talking out loud with you like, um, the Twitter uh, situation, I, I want to say it's like eight bucks a month that uh, Elon wants to charge. And I think the higher end might be like 12, something like that. Um, even Facebook, Instagram, I know they have monthly services these days. And uh, it's just, I'm just telling you guys, this is big money involved with this stuff. So it's really interesting that Epic had uh, one. And um, this is actually something really quite interesting. Uh, one thing that stores try to do is they try to like circumvent the app store situation to where, hey, Go to my website, you know, buy said key or product or whatever, and then we'll, you know we'll give you a code, and you put that into the app. That'd be one way. And so essentially, this is the fight: is uh, can you charge money without Google, but you are on Google's App Store? Now, there's some really interesting uh, details to this thing. Um, I read this one here. This one really stood out. Let me read it to you guys. It says here, according to testimony during the trial, Google had deleted get this, deleted some employee chat logs that might have included information relative uh, to the case. The judge told the jury to assume that the deleted information would not have been favorable to Google. So um, I'm not quite sure how this, uh, how often this kind of thing happens. I, I think, well, I think deleted stuff happens all the time, but uh, where the judge is like, well, you know, you know, you have this company, they deleted a bunch of, you know, employee records slash, well, let's say chat logs. Here's got to be precise the language, employee chat logs. We don't know what it says necessarily, but just assume that it didn't make the company look good. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, uh, moreover, uh, this was saying that it was like match group has been involved with the settlement before Tinder was another one. That's what I mentioned you guys before. There's a lot of companies involved. I, I saw Spotify was mentioned in this one. And then there was another thing that was really fascinating where, um, this is something that like uh, Epic pointed out and then it was brought in the case I mentioned where uh, Google was making deals with big companies to say, hey, you know, just stay in our app store, et cetera. So here, here's an example here. It says the tech giant that's referring to Google 
uh, paid $360 million to Activision Blizzard and millions of dollars to 19 other game developers as a part of an initiative called Project Hug. And that's where the jury's like, yo, this is anti-competitive. Initiative Epic argued was aimed at discouraging them from developing rival app stores. The search company uh, argued the payments encourage game companies to make their titles available in the Play Store. So, you know, you guys can decide what what, what you think about this. I'm just going through this stuff. Uh, however, um, Epic did make a, um, uh, a blog post that's sort of like their opinion on it. And I want to go through that as well. It's really quite interesting. So this is coming from Epic Games. This is on December 11th, 2023. This is their sort of statement after the win. Uh, today's verdict is a win for all app developers and consumers around the world. It proves that Google's app store practices are illegal and they abuse their monopoly to, buy, uh, to extract exorbitant fees, stifle competition, and reduce innovation. Over the course of the trial, we saw evidence that Google was willing to pay billions of dollars to stifle, uh, stifle alternative app stores by paying developers to abandon their own store efforts and direct distribution plans and offerings, highly lucrative agreements with device manufacturers in exchange for excluding competing app stores. Uh, these deals were meant to cement Google's dominance as the only app store in town, and it worked. More than 95% of apps are distributed through Play Store on Android. And I, I want to mention that um, this kind of stuff is, is big money. Uh, for example, there's the case that's been ongoing where um, the, the situation is like if, if, say, you have an iPhone and then you know Google can make a deal with Apple to basically make Google as your default a search app on the iPhone, right? That's huge money. They can do the same thing with Samsung, et cetera. So these kind of deals that they made, um, you know, what does that do to the other uh, internet search browser companies? And you guys may or may not know there are other companies out there. So um, I, I think uh, this kind of stuff, you know, we want to pay attention to, like I said, it affects our, our daily lives. If you have a phone, if you're in tech, or if you, you know, buy any of this kind of stuff, uh, I'll just be perfectly frank, you guys, I, I buy stuff on my phone. And, um, you know, I, I understand that there's massive money in these kind of things. So moreover, let's read more what uh, Epic Games has to say. They say here, uh, Google imposes a 30% tax on developers simply because they have prevented any viable competitors from emerging to offer better deals. And Google executives acknowledge in court that their offer of a 26% rate on third-party payment options is a fake choice uh, for developers. Uh, this is, of course, what we know. Uh, from the CEO down, Google employees willingly, uh, willfully redirected sensitive conversations to chat, knowing that their contents would be deleted forever. So that's actually really quite interesting. Um, they're essentially making the case that Google's like purposely trying to hide stuff. And uh, I'm on Google's platform right now with YouTube, so I should probably be a little bit careful of the stuff that I say, because uh, I guess uh, it is now permanent. But uh, you know, I'm just reading uh, statements by Epic Games. Uh, moreover, uh, this is again coming from Epic. The evidence presented in this, uh, demonst in this case demonstrates the urgent need for legislation and regulations that address Apple and Google strangleholds. Uh, it's a really a powerful word there. Strangleholds over smartphones, including um, with promising legislation in progress right now with the Digital Markets Competition and Consumer Bill in the UK and the Digital Markets Act in the EU. And then this is the final thing coming from um, Epic. It says here, uh, thank you uh, to the court for hearing this important case and for the next steps determining the remedies that will right Google's decades of anti-competitive conduct. And thank you to the jury for the historic decision, the 1 million game developers who couldn't be here. Uh, thank you. The one thing I want to mention with this is that um, even though uh, the jury you know, sided with um, Epic, uh, with the actual solution or resolution, you know, by the judge has not yet been determined. Um, they'll probably do that in the new year. I think it was like the second week of January. Uh, however, you know, if, if the jury's in, in Epic's favor, it'll probably come out on the side of, you know, obviously Epic. But, you know, to what degree, you know, we'll, we'll pay attention to this story. Uh, Google did make a statement. This is coming from Wilson White. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, government affairs and public policy, a Google vice president. And they say here, we plan to challenge the verdict, so of course they do. Um, Android and Google Play provide more choice and openness than any other major mobile platform. 
The trial made clear that we compete fiercely with Apple and its app store. So that's really quite interesting if you think about it that way. Uh, Google would make the case, well, we're not a monopoly because we're competing against Apple. So that's that's the case that they make. It's an interesting one. And then they also says, as well as app stores and Android devices and gaming consoles. So that, yep, that is true. Gaming consoles do have app stores, but it's not exactly a one-to-one comparison here, but I, I get their point. Um, we will continue to defend the Android business model and remain deeply committed to our users, partners, and the broader Android Echo system so that's the uh, case again the jury cited on epic on this one Um, i'd like to hear you guys' thoughts on this kind of stuff and uh, moreover uh, we'll see what happens with these big tech companies so my personal opinion on this stuff is um, a lot of these tech companies are frankly too big and it's actually you know very interesting thing because usually when you bring cases against them just be honest guys they got a ton of money and they got really good lawyers so usually they come out ahead so um, this is actually a pretty big case that Epic uh, was able to win uh, in this uh, round, and we'll see what the enforcement ends up being uh, in January. So stay tuned. Uh, please subscribe, and uh, we'll cover the story when it uh, when we get more details on this. So thanks again for watching, and uh, I'll catch you next time.